Earth's protective magnetic field is fading, weakening. The magnetic poles are shifting, faster and faster. It's the beginning of the next great catastrophe in Earth's disaster cycle, a cyclical event that takes a massive toll on species and climate. They occur about every 6,000 years, with bigger events on the 12,000-year cycle, and earlier today we shared a new revelation about the last one, 6,000 years ago. We have gone over all of the previous information about the last one and how it contained major climate changes and even evidence of a minor magnetic event. We tend to call this the NOAA event. Right now, let's watch about two minutes of a previous video we did on the NOAA event, and then we'll add in this latest revelation. Good evening, folks. We covered this story Sunday, March 19th in the morning show, and a number of emails have come in asking about it. A lot of the focus on the story was how the South Atlantic anomaly is not a permanent feature, but a symptom of the ongoing secular variation. But the questions were about the timeline of the study, the NOAA event I referenced, and the quiet period of the study, specifically asking about the evidence for geomagnetic variation during that NOAA event 6,000 years ago in the period just before the quiet period in the study. Little sneak peeks from our upcoming book. The event 6,000 years ago isn't on the geomagnetic variation list or the Heinrich event list, but it should be. This is a compilation of paleo intensity measurements showing the strength of the field. And the first thing that should jump out is the variability to the curves and to the dating process in general. If this chart extended back a few thousand years more to 12,000 years ago, off to the right, we would see a drop down at the Gothenburg geomagnetic event. And on the left, we see the descent into the modern geomagnetic event. The half cycle at 6,000 years ago is a lesser event, but it's clearly showing up in the records as a dip, even if the dating methods don't agree, never have, and never will. The range covers a broader minimum centered around 6,000 years ago. This matches the volcanic evidence from that period, and also the tropical hydroclimate event, the greenest of the green Saharan episodes, the interglacial version of a Heinrich or Dansgaard Oeschger event, and with the solar forcing to match the cycle in what is now officially called the solar Heinrich Bond cycle. The quiet period studied in this paper is the one that immediately followed the NOAA event, and the fact that the quiet began right after the expected NOAA event speaks further to the lack of quiet during the NOAA event. And we are back to today. As you saw, the climate shift 6,000 years ago in the last event is well studied, and we can piece together evidence of a magnetic shift trying to happen as well. But the journals had never come out and actually called it an excursion, not until now. This is the paper we saw this morning, and there are a couple things to keep in mind. The dating is never going to perfectly match up. We saw that in the previous video. And when you're using different isotopes in every study, that is just the reality. The argon used here tends to show us things being a bit older. Even still, the 6,000 year mark is covered in the error range. And it's argon, so naturally it shows up as being a bit older. They finally use the term magnetic excursion to describe the event. And that pretty much solidifies what we had said in that previous NOAA event video. There was a magnetic event at the last cycle too. No more doubt or educated guessing. We are in that cycle again. It's due in time. The magnetic field of our planet is already shifting. Check out more information in the links below the video. Subscribe and stay tuned for regular updates on everything related to this shift, including how it makes us more vulnerable to the sun, which is entering sunspot maximum at this time. I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.